in the last stream, we were working on a couple of the quests here in Chapter 5, and we are getting very close to the end of Chapter 5 here, which is also at the end of the mod pack with the Volcano Master trophy here being the final thing that we need to make. But uh, we were, of course, working on these four quests up here, resulting in us getting a Dragon Egg. And we were also working on these two quests down here, the one for the Goblet and the one for the Steel Donut, which was a little bit of a convoluted setup, but we did manage to get it going um, at the very end of the last stream. And then finally, we did also go through and find a bunch of dragon heads so that we could make a bunch of dragon scales because the plan for today's stream is hopefully going to be to fight the uh, Guardian Spirit, this guy right here, and also to fight the Gaia Guardian from Batania, both of which are two of the more difficult boss fights in the pack before we get to that Volcano Master questline. And of course, the whole point of getting those dragon heads was that we could get the uh, tier armor from Forbidden and Arcanus. So if we're going to make the uh, tier armor here, uh, we need 15 aquatic dragon scales, which should be doable. Dragon scales, prismarine shard, prismarine crystal, and arcane crystal dust, all of which we should have. I don't want to shift click this because it might use up uh, some of the extra dragon scales that we do need specifically for the other part of the armor set here, uh, that being these golden dragon scales. We need nine of these in total. Uh, these are made with dragon scales and arcane gold. We do now have the arcane gold, and so we should be able to fairly easily throw together uh, nine of those. And at that point, once we have 15 aquatic dragon scales and nine golden dragon scales, uh, we should then be able to go ahead and make a full set of this uh, tier armor here. Nice. So we can uh, finally retire the old Soul Steel Armor, which does look like it was kind of almost at uh, at its end anyway. And we can swap that out for the uh, definitely superior looking tier armor right here. Perfect. And that does give us a little bit extra in the way of uh, defense, which is hopefully going to be quite useful for the, uh, the fights that are coming up today. And so I guess we will start with this line here. So the first quest is the Spawn Greater Sprite. For this, we have to craft a Spawn Greater Sprite egg, and then when we kill the Spawn Greater Sprite, uh, we will, as a reward, get the Greater Sprite heart. Now, looking a little ahead here, the next quest is to get the Spawn Guardian of Sprites egg. Now, to make this, we need four regular eggs, one Terra Steel, and then four Greater Sprite hearts. So, if we're going to be able to complete this quest, we're going to have to spawn four of these Greater Sprites to then craft the egg to spawn the Guardian sprite so i think we are gonna have to make this egg here four times now that seems pretty difficult however one nifty little feature of the runic ulcer is that any runes used in the making of something in the runic ulcer are not actually used so we will get the rune of earth and the rune of pride here back each time we craft the greater sprite so we only actually need one rune of earth and one rune of pride we should already have one rune of earth from a previous uh, craft, yeah, we made uh, two of these when we were making the uh, terrestrial agglomeration plate for, uh, for Terra Steel. As for the Rune of Pride, this also doesn't seem too difficult. It's made with a Rune of Fire, a Rune of Summer, and then two mana diamonds. Again, with this recipe, we will get the Rune of Fire and the Rune of Summer back. Uh, the Rune of Summer is made with a Rune of Earth, a Rune of Air, two Sand, one Glue, or one Slime Ball, one Melon, and then one Friend Memories, which mostly seems pretty doable. In fact, I think the only new thing here is the fond, oh, sorry, the friend memories. Is also one called fond memories? Yeah, so we've made fond memories before. Friend memories are a little bit different in that you'll, you'll see there's a different, uh, a different friend there. Uh, this time around, we have to get a, a friend dust, which we get from a tiny potato, which we get by throwing a regular potato into a mana pool. So let's quickly go and grab one of our uh, uncooked potatoes from our... Uh, normie seed farm over here and uh, if we go and throw that into one of our mana pools which uh, thankfully are full the server has been running for uh, a couple of days now since the end of the last stream so we do have a, an abundance of mana uh, hopefully for today's stream but so uh, we can take this guy uh, we then need to crush him yeah we then need to uh show him the the crushing block here so uh, i would advert your eyes if you're uh <laughs> if you don't want to see this but so uh, we can drop you down and do something like that and then, much like with the uh, Straw Golem before him, we also have to get 
a flint and steel here and uh, do a little something, I think, like like this. And that should get us, yeah, f friend memories. It had to be done, chat. It had to be done. You know what? Just just to make us feel a little bit better for the, uh, the heinous crimes that we have committed, let me uh, quickly whip up another potato. And I think you could just put these down. I don't really think that they have much of a purpose. I'm pretty sure they're from Batania. But uh, I think they're mostly just kind of decorative. So uh, just as kind of, you know, moral support, we can throw one of these guys down, like right there. And look at that. Doesn't that already make you feel so much better? Oh, he moves as well. Nice. Either way, back over here, I have bookmarked all of the things that we're going to need to make these uh, sprite eggs. So we'll start with the Rune of Pride, of course, which requires the Rune of Summer. So two sand, one melon, and one glue. I think we should have... Almost all of that. Uh, you can also, I believe, use a rotten pear in place of glue. So we'll take that. Uh, we will take two sand. We will also take one melon and one melon, along with the rune of air and rune of earth, both of which we have. I'll also take the rune of fire because I know we're going to need that in just a second here. And then if we go and throw all of those onto the runic altar, that should be pretty much good to go. Now, we are going to have to move our mana spreader again so the mana can make its way over to the runic altar, but that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, rune of air, rune of earth, two lots of sand, friend memories, and a rotten pair. Perfect. We do also need to make sure that we have living rock, which it would appear that we do not. Uh, thankfully, we can make more living rock with our uh, ancient mossy cobblestone here. Uh, let me just check. Is my pure daisy down? I think it is. I guess we'll move this temporarily because it's kind of a, being a bit blocked now by this uh, portal here. But uh, let's do this, I guess. And that should uh, slowly but surely provide us with the uh, living rock required. Uh, while we wait for that, let's go ahead and move this guy over to here. Now... Actually, I think what I might do is I might look. I guess we can, for now, do this. And uh, if we get our Wander the Forest, we can link you to you. And that's going to start completing this rune here. Now, going forward, we are going to have to do a couple of recipes. Like this one here, that require a bunch of mana. And the speed at which the mana spreader like moves mana doesn't really change. and Unless you augment it, which you can do with lenses and whatnot. Um... You can also upgrade your mana spreaders to higher tiers. Uh, I might look at getting one of these uh, elven mana spreaders here, because when we start working with those um, recipes that require a lot more mana on the runic altar, it's going to take a lot longer for them to complete if we don't have you know something better than the basic mana spreader that we've been using up until now. But uh, either way, let's not get too distracted too early on here. Let's throw down one living rock, give that a right click, and there we go. We get our rune of summer. Nice. From there, if you want to make the Rune of Pride, we need the Rune of Fire with two mana diamonds. The mana diamonds, of course, requiring uh, those end diamonds there, which I don't think we currently have any of. We don't. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the end diamonds are made with blaze rods. Yeah, so we have to make these with end stone, obsidian, and then an electric diamond, which is uh, a fire diamond, which is blaze rods and diamonds so i think i might make a few of these because i have a feeling we're going to need quite a few mana diamonds today uh, mostly because each terra steel also requires a mana diamond uh, we need at least one for the spawn guardian sprite uh, we also need nature pylons for each one of these greater sprite eggs and we need at least three of these which is another terra steel ingot and then we need a third terra steel ingot uh, to spawn the gaia fight in so we are going to need uh, quite a few mana diamonds today and so uh, let's go ahead and make i guess like a bunch of End diamonds. So, end stone, electric diamond, obsidian. That gets us uh, 13 end diamonds there, which hopefully should be enough for today's stream. And then let's go and drop, uh, I guess, a few of these over into the, uh, the mana pools here. Again, we know we're going to need um, a couple of them going forward. Uh, for now, we just need the two, but we can always go ahead. And you know what? I'll make uh, like eight. I don't want to use too much of our mana because I think we might, despite having five mana pools worth of mana here, um, I think it's possible we do maybe start to run into some mana issues later on down the line. Uh, if we're not careful. Uh, for now, though, two mana diamonds with one rune of summer. And I think it was a rune of fire.
and boom, we have a Rune of Pride. Nice. All right. So we have the Rune of Pride. Again, we only need the one. We can make as many of these uh, spawn eggs as we like. We have the Rune of Earth. Again, we only need one of those. So now we need four Dirty Coins. We need four Natura Pylons, four Elementium Ingots, four Dirty Bone Blocks, and four Me Blocks. The, uh, the Me Blocks are made exclusively out of uh, player flesh. And so we are uh, once again going to have to uh, kind of circle back to the beginning of the mod pack and grab one of these uh, knives here. And this could take a while because if we're going to get four blocks of, uh, of this stuff, that means that we need 36 flesh in total. Um, of course, we can do these one at a time. We don't have to get all the uh, things required ahead of time. But uh, it would be useful to have just, just everything ready to go. Uh, the dirty coins, I think we should have. Those are from the uh, tomb dimension. Yeah, we have uh, 17 of those. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take four right out of the gate here. Uh, we then need the bone blocks. Right now we have five dusty bones. And uh, again, if we're going to get four blocks worth, we do need 36 in total. So we are going to have to head on back through to the tomb dimension and try and find more of those. We then also need the uh, two, uh, four elementium ingots. These, of course, are going to require eight mana steel ingots, which in turn um, we might already have. Let me check that real quick. We have six of the eight required, so we can go and get three of the four elementium right out of the uh, gate here. And in fact, actually, normally we make mana steel by the block, but we can make it individually. If we wanted to make it individually, we'd need two soul steel ingots. Do we have any spare soul steel ingots from the soul steel armor we made? We totally do. Would you look at that chat? So if we take those two and drop those in over here, we then have the eights. And if we throw all of those through here, we should get our four elementium. Nice. And then uh, the final piece here is the uh, four Natura pylons. So each one of these requires an Eye of Ender and a Mana Pylon, which is gold, Mana Steel, and uh, another Mana Diamond there. And then uh, three Terra Steel Nuggets. So if we need four of these, that means we're going to need 12 Nuggets, which is uh, just like 1.3 ingots worth. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we have any Terra Steel Nuggets lying around. No, so we are going to have to make two Terra Steel Ingots. Uh, thankfully, that's not going to be too difficult for us, I don't think. Uh, all we have to do is get uh, some more Mana Pearls here, which we can make with the Chorus Pearl, uh, as well as yet more Mana Steel. So actually, despite what I said earlier, it might be well worth us getting another block of, uh, of Mystic Iron here. So one more block of Mystic Iron. That's going to get us our uh, next block of Mana Steel. We'll then also do the Chorus Pearls. And then if we combine all of these up, of course, onto our terrestrial plate, so one, two, and three, that's going to get us Terra Steel number one. And number two. To make the uh, pylons here, we are going to need yet more Mana Steel. So there is the second Mystic Iron Block of the day, getting us yet another block of Mana Steel. But at that point, we should have, I think, basically everything here for the uh, the four Natura Pylons. Let's uh, throw that in the system. See if we have what it takes to make four of these. One, two, three, and four. Uh, if we put those in as well, we can then go ahead and hopefully make four of these. Uh, we are out of Blaze Powder there, but thankfully we can make more nice and easily. And we'll also, of course, throw the Terra Steel Nuggets in. One. And... Uh, two, three, and four. Nice. Okay, so the only thing I think that we're missing now in terms of making four of these spawn greater sprites is the bone blocks and the uh, the me blocks as well. Uh, I have been slowly but surely gathering more flesh here, and we are getting close. We're at 22 out of uh, 36. We can continue to uh, get more, of course, as we progress on. That's uh, 24 there. But uh, yeah, we also need to get these bone blocks. Now, I'm actually not sure what the best way for us to get these is. I think our best option might just be to head through to the Atum and a kind of mine underground. I'm pretty sure that you can find bone ore. And I also think there are kind of structures underground in the Atum dimension that just have these bone blocks kind of built in them. So I'm thinking what we should probably do is let's grab a chest just so I can kind of temporarily put away some of the stuff that we're going to need when we get back. And then uh, let's head on through and see if we can't find some of these bones 
over in the Atom dimension. So this is the stuff that we are after. We got to th so you got like one burn per ore. This might take a while. Chan makes the very good point that if we take our Vengeance Axe here with the uh, Fortune 5, we're going to get a lot more burns from our burn ore. All right. That's 63 bone there. That should be more than enough. I'm going to leave that uh, guy in the dust. So uh, a few burn all later, and we actually have all of the dusty bones that we need here. One, two, three, and four. And so I think that we are pretty much good to go. So dusty bones, we also need the Rune of Earth. We need the Rune of Pride. We need the four coins. We need the four me blocks which we're not quite there on yet the four nature or pylons we have uh, the four elementium we have and so yeah we just need the uh the four me blocks we currently have what it takes to make two of these <laughs> and then uh oh no never mind three and four well but look at that it turns out we had flesh in the system so we are i think good to go now as i mentioned before each one of these does require a bunch of mana thankfully this doesn't mean a full mana pool's worth of mana which is what i initially thought that it meant uh, thankfully, this is, I think, about a quarter mana pool worth of mana. Uh, it's just the runic altar can hold less mana than a mana pool can. Um, and so I think if we're going to want to get this done quickly, we're going to want to look at better mana spreaders. For example, the elven mana spreader here is pretty easy to make. It does require some dream wood, which is living wood through the elven portal. So if we take six of these and uh, quickly throw those through, uh, we should also, I guess, while we're at it, also get the two mana steel we need to make another elementium ingot. So one and two. And this is basically the exact same as the normal mana spreader. We can just move mana faster, which uh, as you'll see momentarily here is going to come in quite useful when it comes to making these uh, these eggs. So boom, and boom. Now let's go and put this guy down up here. Um, I actually think that I might, hmm. So we can actually use both of these spreaders here. I think if we do this, and I'm also gonna move this real quick because there is mana loss over distance. So if I put this like actually right here, it's gonna look a little silly, but I think we can just direct both of those mana spreaders at that runic altar. And I think I should work out just fine. So let me grab my uh, Wand of the Forest, which I have on me, you fool. So boom, and boom. And then if we begin putting all these on here. So me block, Elementium, Natura Pylon, Rune of Pride, Rune of Earth, Bone Block, Dirty Coin. You'll see that does work, and you'll also see that uh, that little egg there, normally the, there's a picture of a rune there, we're making runes, but uh, you'll see that it's slowly but surely filling in that kind of clock face worth of, uh, worth of progress, and you'll see that it's going fairly slowly. And there is our first of uh, four spawn greater sprites. So if I'm not mistaken, I don't think these are going to be particularly difficult for us to fight. Uh, let me get the next one going here, just because I know it's going to take a while. And then we'll look at fighting the first one here. Uh, Rune of Earth, which we got back. Rune of Pride, which we got back. And Pylon? Yeah. While we wait for that, let's quickly take a swim in the lava. And then let's do uh, a slash home <laughs> to get us out of the lava. And then from there... I don't think this guy is going to do any damage, but just to be on the safe side, I will go and fight him in the uh, a tomb dimension here. So if we just give this a right click, we'll get our powerful sword out. This guy spawns in, and I'm pretty sure that we can just, yeah, kill those guys pretty easily. The harder fight is coming with the uh, the guardian sprite, not necessarily the, uh, the greater sprites here. Uh, so now, chat, we basically just have to do that Three more times.
And there we go. We now have four hearts. So if we head back, we should be able to fairly easily now complete this quest here. The soul of the Sprite Guardian resides in the Atum. Only the Atum can be, uh, only in the Atum can it be summoned. So we do have to do this fight in the Atum. That's like a, a requirement there. And to make the spawn here, we need four hearts, four eggs, and one Terra Steel. So uh, once again, we're going to need another Mana Diamond, Mana Pearl, and Mana Steel. I think we have the Mana Diamond and the Mana Steel. Uh, thankfully, getting one more Mana Pearl here isn't going to be a problem for us. We can now put all of the uh, runes and other junk that we have here away as well. So we'll take our Chorus Pearl, drop that in up here. Twitch chat did point out to me that you can just right-click onto this plate. You don't have to uh, perfectly drop them. It, it's a lot easier to perfectly drop them if you just right-click, and they just drop on quite nicely there. That gets us our third Terra Steel of the day, and that should be everything if we put uh, you and you in the system uh, to make... the spawn guardian of spirits now this fight is i believe going to be a lot more difficult than the first one so there are a few things i want to do and actually before we fight this guy there is something i want to do in preparation mostly for the gaia fight because i do believe the gaia fight is going to be the harder of the two fights here but uh, if we're going to complete the gaia fight i think we should get the nutrition module here from calculator this is made by combining up a, a health processor an energy module and a hunger processor and basically what this allows us to do is it allows us to store up hunger and health in the nutrition module and then as soon as we take damage so we lose our health it will take health out of the nutrition module and give it back to us essentially giving us extra health for fights and whenever we lose hunger it will automatically feed us again if we need it so over here, I have done a bit of crafting ahead of time, and I've also done a little bit of machine processing ahead of time to get things like these uh, amethysts here. So let's throw those into the system, and we should be able to fairly easily make a hunger and a health processor. We should then also, I think, be able to fairly easily make a power cube. We need more mystic iron and more soul steel. Of course we do, because I used our soul steel earlier. That's fine. Mystic iron is easy enough. The soul steel is a little bit trickier, but uh, I don't think it's anything that we can't handle here um i also already have the purified coal there so making this uh, energy module shouldn't be too difficult uh here we're going to need another crystal cluster and we're also going to need more soul dust but again that's just soul sand through the uh, crushing block over here and we can't shift right click that while we have torches so let's swap those out real quick perfect that should get us another soul steel ingot now in order for this to work effectively we are actually going to need two health and hunger processors because we need one uh, of each to make the nutrition module uh, but then you also need another health and hunger processor in order to actually run the nutrition module uh, so we are going to have to get a few more items here for that to work thankfully i don't think those are going to be too difficult for us we do already have uh, the advanced assembly uh, the redstone ingots here are just iron and redstone so if we grab like three iron and three redstone we should be able to run both of those through um, i believe it's the scientific calculator yeah that gets us the remaining uh, redstone ingots that we need and then as far as the health process so we need th uh, we need four flawless diamonds which are diamonds with this atomic binder which thankfully is nice and easy for us to make it's hardened stone and enriched gold which we've made previously uh, right now we are out of diamonds we are out of diamonds that's fine we can use these diamonds here one two three four and i think we should be pretty much there let's grab our mystic iron and our soul steel that's going to allow us to make the power cube and uh, not our first power cube of the series by far we've actually made maybe 10 of these now but uh, there we go and then as for the purified coal we'd already have that and so uh, if we do something like this and this that's going to get us the energy module from there we can do hunger processor energy module health processor that gets us the nutrition module you'll see right now it has zero hunger points and zero health points but uh, if we go ahead and make another hunger processor and ideally another health processor, we should now be able to start filling those point numbers up. So let's put both these down. I don't think either of these require power. 
yeah, they've done. Essentially, you can put items into the plus slot and then you can pull them out. Uh, you can pull the hunger points out even uh, in the minus slot. So for example, if I take my uh, baked potatoes here and I put them in the plus slot, that's going to convert the baked potatoes into hunger points. We can then use the nutrition module to gather those hunger points. And you'll notice right now that I am on two chicken legs shy of full hunger. And if I take this guy, it's going to fill it up instantly. So it took uh, one of those hunger points out of the nutrition module and used them to refill my hunger. If I were to run around, uh, we shouldn't really lose hunger at all. I'm pretty sure as soon as our hunger goes down, um, a point will be instantly taken from the nutrition module, uh, as you saw just there, and used to refill my hunger. And we can do the exact same thing with health. Now, I believe the way the health module works is we have to put mob drops into that, uh, into that slot. Now, I don't know if something like ender pearls count towards this. Let me try real quick. It totally does. And they're actually very good as well. So if we put in a bunch of ender pearls, we have 450 health points. Unfortunately, you can only store 25 in the nutrition module, but I'm fairly certain this basically almost doubles the amount of health that we currently have. So uh, once again, if we were to take a bit of damage here, we should see the health points instantly pulled out of the nutrition module and used to, uh, to refill our actual health. And that's going to hopefully help us quite a bit when it comes to fighting the uh, the Guardian Spirit and the Gaia, because it essentially gives us uh, even more health to work with on top of the uh, the 10 extra hearts that we already have from uh, from eating a wide variety of different foods. So let's throw a, a stack of potatoes in over here. I'm not quite sure how much hunger we can hold. Quite a lot by the looks of it. I think 331 is probably going to be enough, uh, at least for this uh, Guardian fight here. I don't imagine we're going to use more than that. Um, I also think that 8,000 millibuckets in the uh, the old broomstick here is also probably more than enough. But just to be on the safe side, I will go ahead and, uh, and fill that up after emptying it out a bit by accident. So we've got our broom. We've got our sword. We've got our uh, Zora Steel handbow. I think we're pretty much good to go here, chat. I think we're as ready as we're going to be to fight this guy. So I'm going to get on my broom. I'm going to waste some of my uh, health points right out of the gate because why not? And then let's drop this guy down like here. So this is like a big old snake. I believe it is going to come back at us. I think we do want to be high enough here to where we don't get shot by the guys on the ground. We've also got to be careful because I'm pretty sure you can like only hit this thing, I think, from the, the front. Maybe that's not true. Our sword does do quite a bit of damage. Uh, the trouble is that much like with the, the dragon fight, it's kind of hard to use our bow because the uh, the broom kind of gets in the way. But if we can use our bow, it works really well because we do have flame on here and we also have uh, like power five. Obviously, when it gets close, I think we do want to try and uh, hit with the sword if we can. We are, of course, tanking quite a bit of, uh, of damage here. As it, uh, as it comes at us. Oh, 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 let's, uh, let's not die. Let's let the, uh, the hunger module do its thing. Let's also not let these guys get us either. Oop. <laughs> You have slain the Guardian of Sprites and received its heart. Uh, we have, look at that. We have the Sprite Guardian heart. Flippin' heck. That's not too bad of a fight if you are, uh, if you're prepared for it. Uh, it does do a bit of damage, but uh, especially if you have the uh, nutrition module there, really not too bad. And so uh, now that's basically uh, this line of quests done. The only thing we have left to do is the, uh, is the Gaia fight. And then we're on to, uh, on to Volcano Master. Now, in order to fight the Gaia, if we check the uh, Lexica Batania, and uh, by the way, you can upgrade your Lexica Batania by throwing it through the uh, the Elven portal up here. That just adds uh, a few more bits and pieces to the book. But uh, we are looking for the Gaia fight, the first one, Ritual of the Gaia. And for this to work, we have to set up uh, this ritual area. 
So we need four Gaia pylons, we need eight iron blocks, and we need one beacon. The beacon, of course, is going to require a nether star, which uh, as of right now, we do not have. However, we should be able to get one uh, fairly easily. Again, I think we should be able to throw together another one of these. Not too difficult. Uh, and we can, in fact, now go through to the end to get the purple blocks required for uh, the lutetium as well. We can get these uh, much more easily uh, in the end as opposed to trying to grow all the chorus fruit and smelt it all uh, locally. As for the Gaia pylons, getting four of these also shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, we are going to need eight elementium and eight pixie dust. The eight pixie dust you can get from eight mana pearls, which we can, of course get from, or which we can of course get from eight of these chorus pearls. Uh, again, thankfully, we do have a, a bunch of chorus fruit lying around and a bunch of ender pearls still ready from earlier enderman spawners. And so, well, uh, let's just run those through real quick. Uh, actually, that's not. You've got to be sure not to make mistakes like that. I'm not going to get those back. Uh, you have to turn them into ender pearls, uh, into mana pearls first, chat. Otherwise, it will not work. Let's try that again. Now we can throw those over here. And now we get the pixie dust. So one nether star later. And I think we should be able to make a, a beacon here fairly easily. We can. Uh, as for the nine blocks of iron, that's actually going to be maybe a little, a little bit more difficult than you might anticipate due to, the, due to our lack of iron. However, thankfully, uh, we do have 28,000 uh, iron element. And you can fairly easily turn that into iron ingots over here if we lock the recipe we can just shift click these in and uh i guess actually if we put the hopper in here we could have uh automated this a little bit but uh, we do already have seven of the nine blocks and so grabbing uh 18 more iron here is going to do us just fine let's get uh one more block here or two more blocks here and at that point we're basically good and now we just need the uh gaia pylons right so if we're gonna get these we have the pixie dust we need what eight more mana steel but then for these, we also need another 8 mana steel, so we need 16 mana steel, so I'm pretty sure we're going to need two more blocks of Mystic Iron. So more mana steel and more Elementium later. And I think we're basically good to go. Let's have a look at getting these pylons here. We need more mana diamonds. That's fine. We do have the uh, end diamonds. Yeah. So we should be able to take one, two, three, four of those. That's going to get us the four mana diamonds that we need here. Beautiful. And then back over here, we'll put those in. We'll go one, two, three, and four. We can also go and put these in. And also, I guess, put these in. One, two, three, and four. And I think that's basically everything to actually start this fight. Now, the fight does need a good amount of space. In fact, I think you need 12 blocks in each direction so you need to you need to have like the center which is the iron and the beacon and then you need like 12 blocks out in each direction from there so i think what we're going to do is we're going to grab a building wand and i'll probably go ahead and make another one because they're fairly easy to make here and uh this one's almost at its uh at its end and then given that we have sixty-five thousand ancient cobblestone over here i think we'll use this to build our platform out of and also, I think we'll probably do this a little further away from, like, the actual base we have. And we do already have this lovely uh, extending platform of cobblestone that we can uh, kind of use as a, a starting point. So one, two, three, and four. The structure is complete. Um, again, if we've got 12, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You've got 12 blocks from the iron. I'm pretty sure you've got enough space there. Um, I do think that you might have to get rid of these blocks here. And the only thing we have to do here to activate the Gaia fight is to right-click that beacon there with a Terra Steel. So we are going to have to go make one more of those. But uh, before we do that, it has been recommended to me that a good investment here is an amulet from Evilcraft, that being this guy right here, the Invigorating Pendant, this removes bad potion effects. And so I think having this on you will negate some of the negative effects caused by the wither. There is, I'm going to bookmark that real quick. We got it over here. That was recommended by the Twitch chat. Uh, there is also another 
Bauble, which nullifies all potion effects, good or bad. This might... I don't know if this does the same thing. I think it might. This is also very easy for us to make. In fact, it's much easier than the other thing to make. Um, I think I might just go ahead and make both of them, <laughs> just to be on the safe side here. Uh, if we have a dark gem lying around, it's not going to be too difficult for us to make this uh, invigorating pendant from Evilcraft. I'll throw one of the uh, dark gems, of course, through our infuser. And then once we have that, we should be able to make this uh, core here. And then from there, I'm hoping we have some uh, crushed dark gems. We do, we just need some gold string, which is uh, string and gold nuggets. One, two, and three. And there we go. Nice. We'll go ahead and fill that up over in our infuser as well. Good stuff. And I think we're almost as prepared as we're going to be for this fight. Um, I'll put some stuff away here. We don't need to be carrying all of our stuff on us. And uh, I don't think that the uh, handbow here is going to be of particular use to us. I think the uh, the sword is going to be our primary mode of, uh, of attack. And we do, of course, want to make sure that our nutrition module is as full as it can be here. So we'll go ahead and fill it up on health points. And again, I think, you know, 312 hunger is probably fine. Uh, it's gone down like 20 points since we filled it up initially. So I don't think that's going to be too uh, useful. Um, I also don't know if you can use the broom. Uh, in this fight, normally flight is disabled, although the broom might work. But at the same time, I also don't know if it's going to be particularly useful, even if it does work. Uh, we can go ahead and put this uh, emblem of the golden scarab here into one of our bobble slots. I would assume. Like so. And uh, hopefully that combined with this other pendulum is going to help us negate some of the uh, the negative effects of the uh, the weather. You can see here, this is flickering because we're gaining and losing fire resistance due to this uh, obsidian skull. The skull gives it to us, and then the uh, the pendants take it away. But uh, yeah, let's go give this a try, shall we? I almost forgot. Now, this is where something a little bit infuriating comes in. So this quest here wants us to get a Gaia Guardian's head. And as luck would have it, or unfortunately, you don't you're not guaranteed to get the Gaia Guardian's head every time you fight the Guardian. It's actually a percentage drop chance which kind of sucks. So um, what we're going to have to do, uh, the way that you get it, by the way, is using an Elementium Axe. So we're going to have to get an Elementium Axe, which we make from some of this Dreamwood here, which we, of course, can get from Livingwood, which we do have. And we're also going to have to get three more uh, Elementium here, which means we need uh, three, oh, sorry, six more Mana Steel. So there are the uh, Dreamwood sticks or twigs. Back over here, we can make the Axe. So we don't have to kill it with the axe, or we don't have to like do the whole fight with the axe, but we do have to do the final blow with the axe, I believe, if we're wanting to get a chance of getting the uh, the head here. But now I think we're pretty much as ready as we're going to be. So let's head on back over to the uh, the beacon over here. Let's right click with the terror steel. Shift right click. And the fight begins. Now, one of the benefits of doing the fight here in the uh, in the Hell Dimension is that the Gaia doesn't actually spawn any hostile mobs during this portion of the fight. Normally, during this portion of the fight, mobs will be raining down from the sky, like skeletons, creepers, zombies, etc. Thankfully for us right now, that's not the case. I think he has more than one hit left in him, but just to be safe, I'm going to do the last few hits here, I think, with the, with the Elementimax. One of the pendulums here is working. I'm not quite sure which one, but we are not getting negative effects. The lack of mobs does mean that you just have to wait. There we go. Hey, if you could just, like, stand still, dude.
You can see this axe here is definitely not the best fighting tool, but it is what we have to use here. Don't get hit, don't get hit, don't get hit. We've done it. He is dead, chat. He is dead. And would you look at that? First try. Gaia Guardian's head. Whew. All right. So now the only quest that we have left to do here is the Volcano Master quest here. So basically the only thing that we have left to get here is the uh, the idol of a tomb and the uh, the Dark Nether Star, as well as uh, the friend dust. So this all seems pretty doable. Okay, so this is the structure that we're looking for in terms of getting the Idol of Labor. Now, I don't know if someone's already been here. Here lies Giraffe. Worked to death, he will be missed and replaced. I'm a little worried about... Oh, hello. I was worried about traps. Look at that. Idol of Labor. So you basically just have to fly around the Atum until you find one of these structures. Once you've found one of these structures, there will be an idol of labor inside of that structure. And that's one of the final items needed for the Volcano Master here. So at this point, the only thing that we're missing for Volcano Master is the block of Dark Nether Stars. Oh, and a second uh, friend dust here. We have the four steel donuts. We've made those uh, using, of course, the, uh, the goblet and the uh, vampiric ointment and the donut seeds. We've got the guy ahead. We've got the spirit, uh, sorry, the sprite guardian heart. We've got the pharaoh heart. We've got the idol of labor and we've got the dragon egg. So the friend dust is again, super easy. We have made one of these in the past and we can make another one fairly quickly here. Just a potato over in the mana pool. We then crush this. I believe. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, look away, chat. And there we go. We have friend dust. So now we just need nine nether stars, essentially. If we can get nine nether stars, we can craft them up into uh, nine dark nether stars, craft those up into a block of dark nether stars, and then from there, we should be good to go. Boom. And boom. Okay. It took us a while, but we now have the final items required. We have the 18 ruthenium. If we put those in, we should be able to craft up nine dark nether stars. From there, we can craft up a block of dark nether stars. If we then combine that up, I'll put the skull away for now, with an idol of labor, a Gaia head, two hearts, one of the sprite guardian, one of the pharaoh heart, along with Four steel donuts, a dragon egg, a friend dust, and I think that's it. That is it. Okay. So, up at the runic altar for the final time. One, two, three, four steel donuts, friend dust, dragon egg, pharaoh heart, Guardian Spirit, Gaia Head, Idol of Labor, Dark Nether Star. Holy heck. Chat, it's going to take a second here for all of the uh, the manners to pour in. But we've done it. Oh, we've almost done it. We also need a, uh, a Wand of the Forest and a Living Rock as well. Thankfully, we have both. Chat, we have done it. Volcano Master Acquired. Look at that. Flipping heck. It took a while. It took exactly 64 hours to acquire, but we have done it. We have achieved the Volcano Master Trophy. And with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream and also today's series there. We'll come back fairly soon, hopefully, with a, a brand new mod pack. So stick around. If you're not done so already, go ahead and hit follow uh, here on Twitch or subscribe uh, over on YouTube. You can join our Discord, discord.gg forward slash GOC. Uh, if you want to check that out, toss it in the lava. I mean, 
such a waste. Oh, no. Thank you for watching, everybody. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Cool,